Alright, yo, what's going on everybody? It's Smitty back with another video. So with the current release of the Smittycraft trailer, I figured I'd go ahead and make a video explaining everything new in this new season, because there's actually, in fact, a lot of new things. So I have to make a whole video on this, so we're just going to start out with a little bit of information on the server right here. As you can see, it'll be starting October 9th, which is tomorrow, Saturday, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, in the middle there, that's the IP that you have to type in and join. Smittycraft.apexmc.co, and then of course it's a Java and Bedrock server, and I just put my Discord target there if you guys need help. Anyway, what you guys are going to notice once you spawn in is that we actually now have statistics that are keeping track the entire time the server is running. Some of these stats include the most player kills, the most mob kills, the most wealthy, the most time played without dying, blocks placed, a lot of different statistics all gathered out around spawn, just like this. The other thing you'll notice is that we have these little castles right here, and there are three of these castles that each symbolize each one of the worlds that you can join. In order to join the world you want, all you have to do is simply run up to the castle and run into the doors. Once you run into the doors, just like this, we'll go into the survival world, you'll be teleported into that world. So that's all you gotta do, and here we are at the survival world. A little bit of information about the world. So each world plays separately like an entirely different server. If you get a diamond sword on the survival world you won't have that in the anarchy world it doesn't carry over inventories or xp but it does carry over the stats if you kill a mob in the anarchy world it'll uh, add to your overall kill stats in the entire server also you can make money in both the worlds we'll get into that in a second but overall they both have different ends they both have different nethers they both are different worlds pretty much entirely one of the first things you'll notice in the survival world is this giant map right here and this is in fact a map layout of the seed so that's it right there it has a little marker on it, it has the spawn it also tells you the coordinates of couple other places like the end right there is at negative whatever whatever so yeah but anyways the one thing you need to know about uh, the survival world is that all the portals back to spawn back to the hub are located at 0x 0z so if you ever get lost and you need to get back to main just go to 00 and slash spawn will take you back to the to the main area so moving on to the next thing that we added this season and this is kind of big I think this is an actual in-game economy system where you can earn money rank up and basically get the leaderboard top the leaderboards who's the most rich and also buy items and trade items so the first thing you can do to check how much money you have is simply type in the commands slash bal just like this once you enter that it'll show you how much money you've earned and everyone's going to start out with zero dollars but right here i have a thousand dollars so i can go ahead and buy some things now to buy items from the shop the way you read signs is the top is the amount that's how many you're getting the middle is the item that you're buying and then the bottom is the price obviously that you have to buy it at so one diamond for sixteen hundred dollars i click that and i got the diamond now this might not make much sense because i only had a thousand dollars to start and i just bought a sixteen hundred dollar item how did that work well basically what can happen everyone starts with zero dollars and a player can go one thousand dollars in debt underneath zero dollars as you can see, if I check my balance again, slash value, you'll see I now negative $650 after buying that diamond. Now let's say you wanted to see where you are on the leaderboard to see how rich everyone is. What you want to do is enter slash bal top, just like that, and that'll show the top members, just like this. And if there's multiple pages, put bal top page two or number two after. But right here, these are the top five, and as you can see, I'm at the bottom with negative $650. So now I want to find a way to actually make money and sell items to get some money back, being negative right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this diamond that I seriously just bought for $1,600, and what I'm going to do is enter the command slash sell hand one just like that and that'll sell one of the items in my hand which is the diamond for $550. Now you'll notice $550 is a lot less than the $1,600 that I bought that diamond for so if you buy something off this wall just know if you sell it again you won't make anywhere near as much money as you bought it for. And if you're looking for a quicker way to sell items, what you can do is type in the slash sell hand and then no number after it. And what that will do if you enter it is it will sell all the types of blocks that you have in your inventory. If you have 64 mycelium right there, it'll sell all of them. Even if you would have not been holding mycelium in your hand, if you would have had it in some other slot in your inventory, it would have sold all the uh, mycelium in your inventory. So just be careful with that command. So just to review all the economy, uh commands that you can enter right here. So slash bal shows your money, slash bal top shows the most rich, slash sell hand one will sell the type of block that you're holding plus the number that you have right there, slash sell hand sells all the type of that block in your inventory, and then slash sell inventory will sell absolutely everything. Be careful with that command, but I don't think slash sell inventory sells your armor. But if you have like an iron pickaxe on your shotgun, it'll get sold if you do slash sell inventory, so be mindful of that. And then finally, enchantments do not add value to your weapons at all. So don't try to sell an enchanted diamond pickaxe or something, it won't make it any more valuable. So this next feature is really cool, and this actually allows you guys to set up uh, your own little shops using signs here to make money, to make gain items, do whatever you want pretty much. I'm going to show you how to set up trade signs right now. So you see I have three stacks of diamonds in my inventory right now. I go to place a sign, you guys can do this, and what you want to do is type in left bracket, you want to type in trade, just like this to let it know it's a trade sign, and then right bracket. Then on the second line, what you want to do is type in how much money you want them to pay for the item that you're going to give them. So if you're selling them a diamond, for example, we're going to put $1,300. Because I bought them for $1,600, we're going to lower the price down a little bit. Competition will bring the price down. And then there we go. So the sign should be looking a little something like this. Again, second line is what they're paying you. Top line indicates that it's a trade sign. Now the cool thing about these signs is you can actually change up the currency that you want people to pay you in. So if you want them to pay you in diamonds instead of the money of the economy in the server, you can just put one diamond here if you want them to pay you one diamond for the item that you will be trading. And if you want them to pay two diamonds, just put two diamond. If you want them to pay five diamonds, put five diamond. If you want them to pay four redstone, put four redstone. 
So once you have that line done, you want to go down to our third and final line here of the trade sign. And what you want to type in is how many diamonds or how many items you're giving them once they pay the price up above. So right here, we're going to give them one diamond for $1,300. And then what you want to do is you want to put a colon, and then you want to put how many of those items you want in stock. So we're going to have 150 diamonds in stock here, and we're going to sell one of them for $1,300. So once you have all this uh, typed in, this is pretty much it. Your sign should be done. Now make sure you have everything spelled, right? Make sure you have the prices you want, and you want to make sure you have 150 diamonds in your inventory, because it'll take it straight out of your inventory. As you can see right there, I closed out of the sign and it took the 150 diamonds to put them into the sign out of my inventory on the bottom as you saw right there and there you go the sign will turn blue if it's blue that means it's all good it'll say your name below it and you have now created a very easy way for people to come buy items from you and you don't even have to be online to do it so what's gonna happen is somebody else on a different account will walk up to your sign and they'll see your prices and they'll they'll have enough money and they'll left click on the sign to buy them and you'll notice that once people start buying items you'll see that the numbers are changing on the sign so the top number next to the money right there is how much money is on that sign for the owner and then the number after the diamond uh, colon right there is how much are left in stock and then you'll see I buy diamonds from here until I don't have enough money and there we go that's the entire process nobody can break your sign once it's up it's safe easy and very effective to just sell items quickly and easily for everyone so then what you want to do as the owner of the sign to collect your profits is you want to go up to the sign it'll show you how much money's on it and all you have to do is simply right click it and it'll transfer the money into your account now if you were charging some other currency like diamonds it would transfer diamonds into your account but there you go that's how you do that it shows you how much are left in stock and just on a side note if you ever want to get the items back off the sign all you have to do is break the sign it'll give you your diamonds and that's it and again these signs can be used to sell or trade items of every item in the game pretty much but let's say we come into a problem here where the name of the block is too long to fit on a sign. What you want to do is type in slash item DB and that'll show all the names of that block that'll be acceptable shortened down. So for example, right now I want to sell Mossy Cobblestone. Obviously that name's way too long to fit on a sign, but right here I see one of the shortcuts is MCSB. So all I have to do is put that on the sign and then it'll completely uh, recognize that as Mossy Cobblestone and it will work perfectly. Just put it in just like this and now we're selling two Mossy Cobblestone, 64 in stock for $200, just like that for anyone who wants to come buy it. I would say setting up these signs is kind of confusing, but if you need any help, just DM me on Discord. I can help you out for sure and I definitely think this is like one of the best way to trade items and it's just so easy and effective and you don't even have to be online it's just nice so the next thing I want to talk about is the plots that are located just off the spawn in the survival world. Basically, what you can do is buy each or buy a plot for two thousand dollars, one plot per player, and yeah, just the convenience of being very close to spawn here and being pretty protected. And yes, if you want to make shops, this would be perfect to place your signs that we just talked about. And yeah, just just a good area right here, nice nice community. But anyways, the next thing we're gonna be talking about is how to unlock drops when you die. So in the survival world, you are very protected. You, nobody else will be able to pick up your drops when you die. As you can see, that person just died. I walk over their items and I can't pick them up. This is because the person who died is not a allowing me to pick up their drops. So what you have to do is ask the person who died if they want to, basically to unlock their drops if you want to pick them up. So what the person has to do who just died is it tells them in the top left, you have to go slash unlock drops, just like that. And once you enter that in, the other person will be able to pick up your stuff. And it's just another safety feature. So if you die from like fall damage or something, somebody won't be able to take your items. But yeah, go ahead, do that. And there you go, it should work out perfectly. Just a new little feature there to add extra safety on the server. And then one last safety feature on this world, we will actually be protecting people's builds so they can't be griefed. So if you want your, uh, if you just built the house and you want your land to be safe, contact me on Discord or if I'm in the game, I'll come protect it so no one else will be able to grief it. And that's the survival world, very safe. And hopefully it goes very well, very secure and I enjoy it. So now moving on to the anarchy world. And the good thing about this world is that there's literally just nothing to talk about. There's no rules. It's just like normal Minecraft. No keep inventory, nothing. You're, if you die, you die. Nothing safe, no protecting builds, nothing. And yeah, basically all you do is you spawn right here. Once you walk across this red line, you are free to do whatever you want. There are absolutely no rules. You can get killed. You can blow up some houses, do whatever. Welcome to Afghanistan, boys. Okay, so the third and final world that we have here is this very new feature of mini games. So we actually have a few mini games on the server and easy ways to make money pretty much. What we have first is obviously the casino. This might not be the easiest way to make money, but if you want to go gamble some money, we have blackjack, we have dice, we have jackpot, and we also have slot machines. So starting with blackjack, all you want to do is walk up to one of these villagers, click on their sign, and then it will be right here. The rules are basically in the chat. They're telling you what to do. I'm not really gonna explain blackjack. Just kind of figured out. It says right here. We're gonna we're gonna play around here. What do we got? Our cards three. We're gonna hit. Oh. Dealer bus, which one? Two thousand dollars. Let's go, baby. Just like that. And now moving on to the slot machines over here in the corner. So what you want to do to enter the slot machines is it says right here on the signs. You want to type in slash casino space GUI, and then that will give you this prompt right here. And what this screen shows is how much money you're betting. So left to right, it gets increasingly more. So we just won two thousand. Let's bet. Let's bet a hundred. And then right here, if you want to remove it, you can hit the red ones. But we'll just bet one hundred and fifty dollars here. And then what you want to do is go to the middle and click roll, just like that. And then right here in the middle, there will be another button. You want to press that to start, and then that will actually start the slot machine going. And you want to get three of these blocks in a row. What are we going to get here? Okay, so we got an emerald and two uh, redstones. We just lost. We just lost money. We lost 150. But if you want to retry, click the bottom right. You can retry it again, roll again, spend some more money, and uh, 
<laughs> right there, we just won the jackpot of three emeralds in a row, so that actually took our money and multiplied it by seven, so we just won a lot of money. We're having a good day at the casino here. But anyways, another game you can play right here is dice. So on the signs, it'll show you how much money you're betting and how much you could win. I think it's like times three the money that you bet. So you have a 20% chance of winning in dice, and all you have to do to play is simply just click the sign. It'll roll random numbers, one through 100, and if it lands on... Uh, I think t 20 of a select number, 20%, you will win your money times three. Right here, we're gonna win. Oh, wow, we're having a great day at the casino. We just won another $7,500, wow. <laughs> I swear it's not always that easy, but anyways, if we, again, if you're in this place, you can do slash bow to check your balance. Right there, we have $7,700. We've like, we've made so much money here today. But anyways, this last game we have right here is the jackpot. So what this does is you press the diamond block for $25 and it adds that money to the jackpot. And if you get three of these blocks in a row, you'll get a, a, a portion of the jackpot pretty much. This is all the money that everyone puts into this. It'll keep building up until somebody wins. So I'm gonna try it here. I put $25 into the jackpot. And are we gonna get lucky? Oh, no, we lost. So we just lost 25 bucks, but if we would've got three in a row, we would've got a, a share of the jackpot right there. So that number will just keep building up until somebody wins. But that's pretty much all of our casino games. Go make a quick buck at the casino. Any help, DM me on Discord. And now moving on to the 1v1 pit. So this is where the beef can be settled. This is the gulag right here. How do you access the 1v1 pit? It's very simple. All you have to do is walk over here, and these are the cues right here to get into the 1v1 pit. There's different class setups, so iron is iron tools. You have axes if you want to battle with axes. You have bows. And again, on the left, it's a little less money. It costs money to enter, and on the right, it's a little more money that you're betting. The winner's obviously going to get the money. The loser's going to lose the money. But yeah, you just want to click a sign to enter the queue, and then wait for somebody else to come click that sign. And then eventually, you guys will be entered into the arena, and you just simply fight. The winner gets the money, the loser loses, and then you teleport out when you're done. And of course, we're keeping stats for this, so the most wins will be displayed, the biggest losses, the most losses will also be displayed, so don't be a loser. And now moving on to Spleef. So Spleef is very simple, up to 10 people can get in this arena, all you have to do is click on the sign, and then once somebody else clicks on the sign, you'll be entered into a game, you have to wait a little bit, the match will start up, and then you play Spleef. Get him down into the water, break the floor up from under him, and you win a little bit of money for doing this. And if somebody doesn't join you, you can use the uh, the barrier block right here to exit the lobby if no one else joins, if you're wasting time. As always, the wins are displayed on a leaderboard, so go ahead and win some Spleef games for a little bit of money. So now moving on to the Mob Arena minigame, and this is basically just like Call of Duty Zombies, you survive waves of mobs as they try to attack you. We have two maps, we have Spongebob, and we have Keynote or Toten. If you know what Keynote or Toten is, you're an OG, you get plus 10 awesome points. But anyways, what you want to do to join the arena is just click the sign up above them right here, it'll say click here to join. Click that and then you'll be teleported into a lobby. What you want to do in the lobby is pick the class, each class has its own unique abilities, archer, odd job, all these healers, pick whichever one you want to play with, and then once you're done picking your class, all you have to do is simply in the lobby, click the iron block right there. Up to 10 people can be on a team, and uh, you have one minute to pick a class, so make sure you pick a class quickly, otherwise they'll get kicked. And there you go, just survive endless waves of uh, of mobs and stuff and make money doing this. You get money for killing the mobs, so it's kind of fun, kind of difficult, and just an easy way to make money. And then once you end up dying, it'll actually teleport you to the spectator view, so each person only gets one life, so if you die but your teammates are still alive, you can watch your teammates, or you can decide to leave. There's signs in the spectator room to click to leave, or you can always enter the command to leave at any time in the arena, which is slash MA leave. So if you type in slash MA leave, even while you're playing, it'll make you leave the arena, it'll kick you out anywhere you can type that if you want to leave at any time, pretty much, without even dying. And then once you're out of the arena, your stats will be displayed on signs off to the side if you want to see how how good you did, who led the team, pretty much, and there you go. Then this other world is the SpongeBob world, same thing, click the sign pick the class, enter the lobby, click the iron block, and uh, when you die, you'll spectate, and uh, once you leave the spectator mode, you can always check out your stats, as always. They're both the same, just a little bit different maps, a little bit more challenging in their own ways. And yeah, that's Mobbery, and I think it should be fun, easy way to make money, and uh, it's kind of, it kind of gets the adrenaline going when there's hundreds of mobs chasing you. But anyways, I want to thank you all so much for watching, I'm really looking forward to this season, it should be a lot of fun, this is obviously way different than any previous season, it should be a lot better. Thank you all so much, if you guys need to help, DM me on Discord, as always, join the Discord, and until the next one, I'll see you guys tomorrow for the next episode of Smittycraft. Thank you.